Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. My name is Connor Philippine. Welcome back to the Minnesotan Sports Podcast. And before I say anything, I want to apologize for how MIA I've been. Um, so basically what happened was I found out over the last three weeks, apparently, I've had mono. And I found this out because a couple weeks ago I had this, like, eight-day-long fever where I was just feeling like crap the entire time. I got it, multiple tests for it, and they couldn't figure out what it was. It wasn't pneumonia, it wasn't flu. And then that finally went away. And then what ended up following after it was this really inflamed tonsil situation that I had. And that just kind of started going away today. Like, the last nine, ten days, I had this just really bad tonsil inflammation and just horrible pain while I was trying to eat or swallow anything and talking was very labor intensive as well. And so for all those reasons, the last like two, three weeks, I just have not been really in the mood to post anything. And it was kind of a, a slow time because the twins were just kind of starting out and the wild weren't gonna make the playoffs and everything like that. But thankfully I'm my voice is back just in time for the draft stuff to start happening for the NFL. Excited to be back for that. But this video was just a quick rant just kind of talking about what we think could potentially be wrong with the Twins. We know really at a baseline level what's wrong with them. And it just, it sucks because it feels like we're just watching the same season we watched last year before the Twins eventually turned it on a little bit more and made the playoffs and, and all that stuff happened and, and we actually accomplished some things in the postseason. But it just kind of feels like this is a copy-paste of what happened in the middle of last season. And obviously, we have injuries that we can try and blame some of this on. You know, we've got Royce and Correa both hurt. And a, a few of these games we probably would have won if we had them in. But we can't just blame injuries on why we are 6-11 and to start off the season. We just got swept by the Orioles. I'm recording this maybe an hour after the Orioles just walked us off uh, in, in the final inning. And it's just, I don't know if it's an energy thing or what it is, but players are not stepping up that we thought would step up. And I was hoping that at the very least the absence of Royce and that eventually the absence of Correa would lead to some of these young guys finally being forced to step up and start playing better. And honestly, Austin Martin is the only player currently on this roster that has shown any kind of promise over the last couple of weeks. I mean, going down in order here, Julian, had, besides coming with a couple of clutch home runs in that Dodger series, has done nothing. 175 average. Jeffers has actually been okay. I guess that's the second guy on the roster that I've actually had a little bit of confidence in. Buxton is my biggest frustration because year after year, I just, I heard it in my ear, just wait until he's healthy, just wait until he's, if he can put a whole season together with full health, he's just going to tear the league apart. Well, here we are, three weeks into the season, Buxton has been completely healthy, he's been playing in center field, besides a couple spectacular catches and maybe one or two clutch hits, Buxton has done nothing, he can't hit a slider, he can't hit pretty much anything off speed. It's just so painful to watch a guy like Buxton that year after year we were just told, hey, all he's got to do is put together a healthy season. Here's your healthy season, Buxton, and you're blowing it. And I don't understand what else we can ask for, for from Buxton. Everything is in his favor right now, and he still can't hit anything. And then we've got Kirilov, who is doing okay. It kind of feels like he has... A good game than a bad game and he just hasn't found consistency but at least he hasn't gotten hurt yet jose miranda has done pretty good coming up uh, but again it, it all comes down to hitting in those those high leverage situations larnick just came up can't say much about him margot can't hit anything you know again i said austin martin actually has been pretty good since he's been called up hopefully he can stay up willie castro has been one of our worst hitters and then besides one clutch hit in this game that we just watched, Kyle Farmer has had one of the most horrific starts to a season I've ever seen, including a key ball right between his legs in that Tigers game. 
in the, the first Tigers game, I think, or maybe it was the last Tigers game. Yeah, the one that we blew after being up 2 nothing. So all in all, our, we cannot hit the ball, especially in high leverage situations. And it's, that was the same story we started with last year too. And it's so frustrating because this year, it's looking like we can't afford to have this kind of an April because there's a lot of different teams in this division that are actually starting to heat up. I don't know if I believe that the Royals are going to continue the level of success they've had. It just feels like they need one more year, and I don't expect them to maintain this level of success. But the Tigers and the Guardians look legit. And I feel like we're going to have to win upwards of 90-plus games this year if we're going to be able to win this division. And the way we're playing right now, I just don't know if we're going to be able to do that. And obviously, only 17 games have been played in a 120-game season. We still need to get Correa back. We still need to get Royce Lewis back. There's a lot of things that can still go in our favor. But it all comes down to we are struggling to hit when it matters. And our pitching has actually been decent. You know, our pitching has been, you know, off and on when it comes to the, the back end of the rotation. Um, Pablo Lopez was amazing. Uh, Joe Ryan has been pretty good. And then the rest of the guys, I mean, Paddock has a couple good games, but he has had issues with control in his games where he struggled. And it just feels like even when he does put together a good game, he can only go like four innings, which isn't bad because our bullpen has honestly been one of the best in the whole league, to be honest. But then after that, we've got Varland, who just, I hate to say it, he seems like a, such a great guy, but Varland just has been struggling greatly so far. And it's just, it's it's tough because you have to make some decisions about about all that. And having a third guy in this rotation that's consistent and a good starter, like we could have gotten with a guy like Jordan Montgomery, but we didn't pay him, that's a major factor for us right now. And we could have won a couple more games, I think. Even though our biggest issue has been hitting, I think pitching could have have been a, a bigger thing to, to focus on in the offseason. And it's clear that we're going to have some big issues in the third game and sixth game of every series that we could potentially have in the playoffs, if we even make it. So that's another big concern is we don't have our third guy. Our bullpen is amazing, so for the rest, for the most part, our pitching is in pretty good shape. It's just, can we win enough games with so much uncertainty at the back end in the regular season to even be able to get to that next level? And then, I believe in our ability to get ahead of this, these hitting issues, especially once Royce Lewis comes back, Correa comes back, when those two are on the field at the same time, I definitely think there's an extra spark. But can those guys stay on the field is the question. And can all these other guys rally behind them and actually become better players because they're on the field and not just cower behind them and hope that Royce Lewis generates all of our runs? So it's kind of one of those things where we're 6-11. and 11. A lot can still happen this season, but the fact that it just feels like such a copy-paste of the issues we struggled with last year is what gives us the most frustration and the most concern. Because a lot of these players that are in our lineup were in the same situation last year and couldn't deliver. And I still believe that Julian can put it together. He's off to a rough start. But, you know, there are players like, you know, Kirloff and Miranda and Larnick that, and Castro on top of everything. Farmer, it's just, it's tough because even, even the guys with the good batting averages on our team, it doesn't feel like I can see them walk up to the plate and feel any degree of confidence in high leverage situations and with runners in scoring position. It's just, it, it's the same situation as last year and we need to find some way to fix it. But let me know in the comments section what you think we need to do to fix it. Is the only solution to this, hope, hoping that we win enough games before the trade deadline and then hoping that we make a big trade? Who knows? But as of right now, I don't think this front office would see the way that this team is playing and think that it's worth giving up any prospects to make this team better. So we're going to have to find a way to really turn it on in May and in June.
But again, let me know in the comments what you think. Please like and subscribe. I'll be back with a lot more NFL draft action in the next couple of weeks. And I'll see you on the flip side.